Hello. Today we are going to demonstrate building a 204 load tender from TransPlace as a guide on the Steady platform. Uh, so a guide on Steady is a way of defining an EDI specification from your trading partner as JSON schema. And the basis of this, once you have the JSON schema defined, you can use that for both translation, validation, as well as for generating EDI documentation. So if you want to ingest a 204 load tender and parse the load tender into a JSON shape, uh, the way to do that with the EDI Translate API is to first build a guide. Uh, and a guide is required uh, for both generating and parsing EDI documents. So in order to create a guide, you're going to log into Steady and go to the Guides product, which you can find here in the menu, and you're going to create a guide. Now, you have to be very careful when you're specific specifying the release because the release of a EDI document is going to have uh, specific segments and elements that it supports. And so I'm looking at this PDF here. Sometimes it's hard to find. Usually freight and the logistics world is on the 4010 release. I don't believe that there's anything in here and there's nothing in the sample file that they provide either. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to just build a 4010. Uh, and uh, hope that it works. So the 4010, oh, there it is. It's a 4010. So we're going to choose the version 4010. We are going to select a 204 motor carrier load tender, and I'm going to give it a name, Transplace. So this is our guide user interface. And you can see on the overview page, you can select the delimiters, and this has to do with EDI writing. So if you're generating outbound EDI, you can select the delimiters. Uh, if you are doing um, trying to render documentation, you could choose the ISA sender and receiver ID and things like that. But for us, we're just really looking to build out the actual main transaction set, which is everything from the ST segment down to the SE segment. So usually what I like to do is before I actually go into the elements and the qualifier codes and relational conditions of the segments themselves, I like to just get the out the structure. So I like to work out to in. So the first thing that I'm going to do is going to make sure that I select all of the segments that are used and I'm going to mark their usage. Now, in these PDFs, you're going to see two columns, a rec, like the requirements column, as well as a usage column. The rec is like what X12 says you should do. And then the usage is how it's actually implemented by the trading partner. Usually these things match, whereas like M is must use and O is optional. Used is, is a synonym for optional in this case, uh, but sometimes they differ. So it's good to just take a look at that. So let's build this out. So we have the SD, ST segment is always going to be optional. Um, although this is just a nuance of, of the EDI guides product. Then we're going to select the B2 as required, the B2A as required as well. And we select those because in every X12-204, it's effectively required to always have those two segments. You can't have a 204 without them. Some of these other optional elements we will use as well. So the L3 is used, so we'll mark that as optional. The AT5 is optional. If we don't see a G62 and an M3, we're just not going to, um, we're not going to touch it at all. Then we'll have an NTE segment, which is also optional. Then we're going to go into the detail. So you can see everything at the heading is now complete. We're going to go into the detail and we're going to select the 0 200 loop. So it should start at the 0 300 loop. Um, but this guide says in the detail, there's a 0 200 loop. I think this is in the wrong position. I think that what they mean in this PDF is that the 0 207 should be in the heading. So I'm going to mark this as used. We will come back to that later. So we're going to go down to the detail and we're going to mark the S5 as required. Because we're in a loop, you have to, um, in order to select the segments that are inside of the loop, you have to actually drill down. Um, and so here the segments will be. So we have the S5, which is the first segment of a loop is always required. The L11 is optional. The G62 is optional. And the NTE is optional. Sometimes you have nested loops. So inside the 0, 300 NT, uh, S5 loop, you'll also have a 310. So this is the N1 loop. So we'll mark this as optional. First segment of a loop is required. 
even though it says used, this is just a nuance of these PDFs. This is technically required. N3 is optional and N4 is also optional. The last thing we'll have is the 350 loop, which is the OID, which is also optional. And we're good there. And then we have the SE. So now we have the whole structure uh, created here. And we will set a reminder to come back to uh, this one later. Now, just to confirm that we are looking at the right thing, here's our EDI reference. So we can select the version and our, this is like the actual X12 table data. So you can see that the N7 segment is indeed in the heading and there is no N7 in the 4010 in the detail. So that's a mistake in their guide. So moving on, the ST segment we auto populate for you. So we auto populate the O1 and the O2 elements here. The O1 element is the actual 204 qualifier code. Um, so we auto populate that for you. The B2 segment is the beginning of the shipment, be beginning segment for the uh, shipment information and transaction. So what we're going to do is we're going to set the elements that are present in this PDF here based on the usage. So in the B2, it looks like the O2, sorry, the O1, O2, O3 are not used, but the O4, sorry, B2, O4, B2, O5 are both optional because they're marked as used, and the BT, B2, O6, which is required. Now, before we move on, what we want to do is we're going to want to look at the uh, qualifier code that they support. So the O5 uh, supports K and L for kilograms and pounds, and that's going to go in this allowed value section. Now, depending on the data type, in this case, it's an ID, like qualifier ID versus AN, which is alphanumeric. Um, it'll depend on whether or not it has allowed values. So anything that's an ID will have an allowed value. So for example, B206 will have only support CC and PP. And here's the description. You could also add usage notes and things like that. So this B2 segment is saying, here's the shipment identification number, and then we'll know if it's in pounds or kilograms, and then the type of payment, which is either collect or prepaid by seller. So the B2A segment is next up, and it's only we only use the B201, which is required, and that supports three different qualifier codes, which will give the receiver of this a context on what the transaction is all about. So what is the purpose of this transaction? Is it original? Is it cancellation? Or is it a change? Is it load tender change? Next, we'll have the L11, and the L11 will support the one and two elements, which are both listed as optional here. What you'll see here is that we automatically created a relational condition. So in EDI, there are things called relational conditions, and it follows the syntax of a letter and the elements 0, 1, and 0, 2. So in this case, it's paired P0102, which says that if either of these is present, then the other is required. So it means that you can't really send one without the other. And the way that you know that that is uh, relevant in the guide is, is uh, whether it's um, the required segments is X. And usually there's a syntax note here, but that's not, it's not present in this PDF. So we're going to go in, we're going to create these allowed codes. And we're going to move on. Actually, before we move on, just to explain what this means. This is basically like almost like a key value in JSON, which says this reference identification, whatever is in this field, the definition of that number or ID or whatever it is, is based on what is present in the O2. So if this is a number and it's BM in the O2, then it's the bill of lighting number. Moving on to the AT5. In this case, we have the O1, O2, and O3, and they're all optional. The first one is a special handling code. And so we support HM, HDD, DNF, OTC. O2 is going to be EX. And O3 is just a description. Next, we have the NTE segment, which supports the O1 and O2. And the O1 is effectively the uh, explains what the description in O2 is. 
So in this case, it's CM, so it's a carrier comment. I accidentally entered the wrong one, so I'm gonna remove this value. CM. This actually isn't a supported code in X12, which is a good example here. So we have the ability to create custom codes, uh, which it looks like that's what Transplace did in this case. So it's actually the carrier comment. And so the description here is going to be carrier comment. And I'll save the code. So they've just basically come up with their own qualifier codes. So now we're talking about the, the N7. And look, we're confirming here, this is actually at the... The, the heading level, not the detail, despite what this says here. So this is not in the correct position. So the N7 uh, is a, is the N7 segment is the first in the loop. So in order to select that, I have to make sure I click down here. So we're using the 01, 02, and 11. And the 02 is the only one re that's required. The first two are descriptions. So they're alphanumeric. And the 11th is uh, qualifier, supports qualifier codes RT and TV. Now they have different names for this. So I'm just gonna add this as reefer, and then I'm gonna add this as dry van. Next, so there's a note here, so N7, O2 is not used for TMS, but must be included. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add this to the usage notes. Next, we're on the S5. This is the detail. So we have the S5 enabled, and then we have to drill into the actual S5 segment. And within the S5 segment, we have one, two, three, four, five, and six all used. The first two are required, which they're already marked. And now I'm going to go in and I'm going to actually choose the ones that are the type ID and I'm going to add codes. So this is CL, CU, PL, PU. And S4 is going to be a weight code and that's going to be L or kilograms depending on the weight qualifier. And then the last one is going to be CL, PLT, pallets, and EA each. So this is interesting in that PL, there is a code for PL pallet um, or unit load, but this has PLT also supported. So I'm going to add both um, just in case we look at the sample file and it turns out that pallet uh, is different. So I'm going to call this pallets. And these will basically just be synonymous. L11. L1101 is going to be used here. And the O2 is going to be optional as well. And they're going to be, again, they're going to be conditionally related. So if you send one, you have to send the other. We're going to support codes here. So it's going to be D O S O P O Z U and Z Z. Some more comments here. Oops, pasted that in the wrong place. So now this is a date time one, 01, 02, 03, 04, 05. You can see we automatically create the conditions based on how they're used. So we support 10, 37, 38, 53, 54, 68. Time qualifier is going to be Y or Z. And then the time code is going to be local time. So they always want you to send this time as local time. Again, here are the syntax rules that we had earlier. So you're going to see we probably already created those. So P0102, P0304, and R0103 already there for you. Next could be another note. So these are going to be optional. The reference is going to be CM. Again, this is uh, not CMT. This is a custom code. So we have to add it again. Carrier comment. And the description here is going to be 
based on this. So I'll add it to both places just so it's legible. Okay. Now the N1s get a little bit tricky, but it's good to highlight a specific scenario here. So the N1 loop um, often supports multiple qualifier codes like a ship to and ship from. And these are nice to create as variants, which allow you to turn these loops into to two different objects. So for example, I will build out the structure, but I'll wait to do the qualifier IDs, qualifier codes, and I'll do that later. So the first one is the N1 loop. 01, 02, 03, and 04. The N3 supports the 01 and 02. And the N4 supports the 01, 02, 03, and 04. So this is what you would call a variant in which you would, you could have, you could change the key name to say, this is the ship from variant. And we'll have the qualifier code here be SF for ship from. So when you're doing your mapping or parsing this file, you'll know that this N1 is the ship from. And then the N103 we can have as 93. And we won't have any other qualifier codes for this. Now, what we can do to add a variant is to duplicate it. So now we'll have two iterations, but this one will be the ship two. And the only difference between this one is that we won't support the SF Qualifier code will support the ST, the ship two. And I'll explain in a little bit why that's relevant. Ship from, and then we should change this to ship two. We're almost done here. So the last thing is going to be the OID loop. And the OID supports one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and they're all optional. This can be the only one that supports qualifier codes. It's going to be 04. So we're going to support CA, CT, EA, PC, PL. Quantity is not going to be relevant, but we will do the L and K for weight qualifiers. And then the volume qualifier is going to be E for cubic feet and X for cubic meters. All of those syntax rules would have been automatically created for us. The last segment is going to be the SE, and just like the ST, that's we don't need to map that. So now that we've created this guide, we can go ahead and click Publish just to uh, publish all our changes. And now what you'll see is we have automatically generated a sample file for you. And we inspect the file. So if you went and sent ZZ in this, it's a supported code. But if you said YY, we're going to say we only support these codes in this guide. So you can change back, say BM. We'll also parse this into JSON. So earlier when we were talking about the ship to and ship from example files, uh, see how these are repeated here. Um, we will actually see in the N1 loop, we'll have an N1 ship to, and we'll have an N1 ship from. And this is nice because you don't need an if statement in your map that says if N101 is ship from, use this logic or this is the address for the ship from or if it's st do it this way instead you can just know it by which loop you're in and which object so now let's see if we validated this guide against the test file that transplace gave us so we'll take this file and we'll drop it in here and what we'll find is that i forgot a delimiter looks like i copy pasted some things wrong so what we're doing now is we're going through this file and we're trying to understand what about the guide that we define based on the PDF does not conform to the specification or does not conform to the EDI sample file that they sent us. So it looks like we have an N7 here, but we didn't define the N715 because that wasn't on the PDF. If you recall, the N7 only supports 11 but it looks like they're sending in 15 here. So we can hit this and we can just go and make this optional. And that's the equipment one. You'll see now the file parse. So we can publish the changes because uh, in the inspector, we, we parse the file and validate the file against the latest guide, uh, but the API will only validate against the latest published 
guide draft. So you have to go and publish this. So now we have a guide for transplace that can parse an X12204 via API or, or in this UI and give you JSON back. And this is what the JSON looks like. If you have any questions, reach out. And uh, if you'd also like to import this guide, we can share the import link so you can uh, import it directly into your account. Thanks.